Hey everyone and welcome back to another Blender 2.8 tutorial. So this is the final video before we start jumping into modeling our own scene and some small props to build that scene. But before I do that, something which I um, haven't really noticed discussed very often or if at all really, but it's something I find really, really useful. Um, and that is taking existing assets. Uh, so especially those created by larger companies, bigger games, where they have a very solid pipeline and structure for how their assets need to be put together, taking those and reverse engineering them to really find out how and why they've been built that way. And uh, now this is gonna be good for people, if you're like myself, who just seem to pick things up and learn better by doing the reverse engineering kind of technique rather than following along with certain tutorials and things and especially written texts and things like that may not work for you. Now, of course, this is a kind of gray zone on uh, maybe morality or legality uh, because I will be working with assets made by Valve for the Team Fortress game. Uh, there are websites that you can do this, but you can also do this with assets like uh, Dota, for example, with modding assets are very easy to get hold of. Uh, they've been dis distributed for that reason. But again, they still have that whole foundation of being built to a certain scope for the company making them and the restrictions and requirements made to keep those to the best quality possible. So I'd recommend doing this. Of course, don't redistribute them. Don't use them in your games or sell them on. But this should fall under the fair use practice because this is for uh, learning and taking things apart in this way. And what I find really useful about this is as a new modeler, I had a lot of conceptions in mind, not knowing the kind of techniques and rules that experienced artists follow. Uh, so I had concepts in mind, like all models had to be built of just one single mesh. Uh, all of the faces needed to be joined and things like that. Before I do start going into this, we're gonna have a look around the model, see how it's built and get some information about this. Uh, you can get things like this, like I said, you can go to kind of Dota mod and uh, download the assets there. For this, if you Google something like 3D asset model resources download, you can find web pages where you can download these. I won't link anything like that in the description, but like I said, I think this is very much fair use, uh, very useful as well. Just don't do anything like reselling it or passing it on. I would rec recommend getting an object like this. Something very simple, low poly and stylized from a game like Team Fortress is very handy uh, because it's just a lot easier to break down for a new modeler and you can very easily see what's going on uh, in comparison to if you get something from like Overwatch, which is going to be a much higher poly count. With a model like this, the first thing I'll do is I'm going to be interested to find out how many of these pieces are actually all joined, how this has been UV wrapped. For instance, is that badge actually part of the cap itself? So this is the captain's hat. How's the band worked in and things like that. So if we go into edit mode, the very first thing that uh, you'll notice is this is triangulated because this is from a game. Games read things as triangles rather than quads. So it will automatically be triangulated, which immediately can make it a little bit harder to read and get a gauge of what's going on. So a really handy tip is inside of Blender, if we use the search functionality and search for try, and what we can do is we can do the tries to quads. So this is more what it would have looked like when the modeler was developing this. This is very much what uh, you tend to work with in Blender before you do that final stage of triangulating it or letting the engine triangulate it for you. So this is now much easier to read. We can see how this has been made. Uh, you can probably see how this has been extruded out and uh, beveled for the edges and things like that to get a nice uh, clean cut for the cap. Uh, and most importantly is we're gonna look at some very handy key bindings to give us these gauges that I mentioned to see how these are put together to see what is joint where. So if we go into wireframe mode, we're gonna hit Z to go into wireframe mode. We can already see here that these bolts on the side, they're not actually part of the square. And that square, uh, the cube here, isn't actually part of the band either. So this is the sort of thing which would have completely thrown me off when I first started modeling. Uh, like I said, I would have assumed that this would have needed to have been extruded from the band and then somehow extruding this bolt from the cube buckle, which would have meant a lot more faces and verts being added to actually join these all together. Where of course, in this instance, it's better to have just the bolt by itself and we can move that around. And what I'm doing here to get this is, if you want to see where objects are joined together, you can highlight over the, uh, the component that you're interested in. If you press L, that will select everything which is connected in this single part of the asset. So then you can press G and move this around and you can get an idea of how this is then put together. So what the model has done here is this turquoise line around the uh, the edge there. That is 
a set of edges which have been modified to be classed as a sharp edge. So if I select all of these, press Control in E, we can clear the sharp and you'll see that goes away. Um, and then if we do that again, Control in E to mark sharp. And I'll just put the shortcut highlights on as well. I forgot about that. Now, the reason they would have done this is when they're smoothing things out, they wanted to keep the faces nearest to this edge to be nice and flat. So you add a sharp modifier there to allow that to happen. And this is the kind of thing that I mean is that this can be very easily broken down now. I can look through all of this and I can start trying to work out why certain approaches have been made and get an idea of how an asset created specifically with performance in mind for a very stylized low poly game has been constructed. So you can do the same thing again for the buckle here. We can move this out. We can see they've done the same thing. They've added a sharp seam here. And then the other thing which is going to be obviously disconnected is the cap itself, which makes up the majority of this model. It may have some sharp seams. No, that's they've been having be with all of that to be smoothed off uh, as it is and then you can see another sharp seam back here and things like that we can see as well that the middle of the emblem is its own thing and i think on this as well that each of the different wings are so again i'm just pressing l to select all of the bits which are connected to a single object uh, that the mouse is highlighted over so the way they probably would have done this is to have created like the left part of the emblem and then mirrored this over keeping the uvs and things as well because you can share that for a nice quick process there. It's also surprising as well that they've left faces like this in. That's something that won't be seen, so you might have been able to have gotten rid of that. But again, there may have been a reason uh, that they knew that that would be seen. Maybe there's like a showcase or something where you can see the whole hat. So again, all really interesting things to keep in mind. Now, the final thing is this can give you a good idea as well of how the UV editing has been done. So if we go into the UV editor, I'm gonna press N and T to remove that so I get a bit more screen space. I'm going to edit mode and select everything. So again, you can see they've got some really nice UV editing going on, some very clear cuts. Um, unfortunately, because we're using an OBJ, it doesn't keep hold of the information of where these seams were placed. But if you go into the connected linking, you can actually use this again to select everything on the hat in the UV editor. Uh, and you can see that this is where they would have made their UV uh, cut. So here they would have gone Control E, uh, Mark Seam, and that would have been that seam just there and then we can go around to this one and again that would be another seam that they've added in to separate that from the rest of the hat when they're UV editing and then that gives the artist the uh, UV space to create their texture and paint all of this on to get that final kind of stylized look that they had going for Team Fortress. So another thing that surprised me here in fact is if we look into the emblem the mirrored pieces have their own UV islands which because the shape is exactly the same, they could have gotten away with having that overlapping and then just painting the same thing onto both bits. But again, I would imagine they've done that for a certain reason. And you can see here that's because the texture and the detail is actually slightly different. So they've added uh, different shine effects to different uh, parts of each side of the emblem. So again, these just give you extra things to consider, things to keep in mind when you're making your own models, whether you want to share the UV island or whether you can afford to separate them, take up a bit more space, but make every different bit uh, unique. And of course, I think all of this was done on a 512 by 512 texture. So they're very small textures, but from a distance, I mean, this still holds up and looks pretty good even nowadays. So you can get away with some low res stuff. Uh, and this is how mobile games get away with some half decent looking stuff at the moment as well. So that object was nice and easy. Uh, I've also imported here the scatter gun from Team Fortress as well. Uh, this one's slightly more complex, so I'm not going to go through the whole thing. But again, it's just interesting to see how the different objects of different complexities are very similar the way that they're built. So we can already see we've got the sharp seams marked around certain parts here, which is going to give us a good indication of where things are separated. So the barrels are completely separated, knowing that no one's going to see the inside of the... I think that's like a hand grip there. Uh, knowing that's not going to be seen, then they've just removed that face altogether to lower the geometry. Again, I think this section is going to be separated as well, so that's completely separate, uh, as is the stock compared to the trigger um, and all of the, the other bits down there. So you can see again, like I mentioned, as a new model, I wouldn't have known that was a good workflow or something which is even acceptable. But when you actually look at it, it makes a lot of sense because again, trying to pair these verts up with the verts on the holster would actually take more verts and tries than just having it as a separate object sliding that inside of the model where no one's going to see it. And again, you can see that they've removed the face just there as well. So again, we've lost some 
geometry and detail from the face, which is never going to be seen. Um, and if I'd seen somebody do that on a tutorial, I would have thought they're taking shortcuts and I probably wouldn't have wanted to follow their contents. But now that I look at a lot of the models created by professionals in the industry, it actually makes a lot of sense why these uh, would have been taken. And again, if we go to the UV editing, we can see we've got a really nice UV map here. For some reason, the, uh, the UVs have separated themselves from the texture. So we just move that up and you'll find out where the texture was. It's probably not perfect. I'm not sure where that happened. But again, some really nice UVing can be seen here. And like I said, if UVing is something that really confuses you at the moment, maybe that's something you get stuck on. You wouldn't know where to put a seam. Just come in here and like I mentioned, just take this apart uh, edge by edge. It might, may seem a bit boring, but when you finally get that kind of eureka moment, when you see how they've laid their edges and why they've done it, that could be the thing which finally kind of solidifies in your mind on your own models, what would make a good edge for a seam on your model. So I think this is uh, completely valid. I think this is a really, really handy workflow. Like I said, maybe specifically for people like myself who find the reverse engineering more, more of a comfortable workflow. Uh, that's how I've kind of self-taught myself game engines uh, unity and unreal as well uh, and it kind of goes over to modeling and things like that I, I just like to pick things apart which have already been made question why they've been made that way and then apply similar aspects to my own work so I, I kind of struggle personally to sit down and read through a huge textbook on a topic without being able to just get my hands on the the project itself and kind of dive in and learn as I'm going so hopefully this has been useful. This again, we're going to be keeping a lot of these techniques and workflows in mind when we're creating our scene in Blender. So I just wanted in the meantime, between any of the videos, if there's anything you get stuck on, uh, anything you want to learn more on, I would definitely recommend trying to do things this way. Uh, and the only other thing I wanted to mention is that, like I mentioned, these are assets from existing games. They've been paid for, developed for a game which has been sold. Please don't distribute these. Please don't sell them on. But I do think this is very valid and useful because in comparison to buying something off of something like the Unity Asset Store, the Unreal Marketplace, uh, from experience, I found some of the assets on those can be a little bit questionable in quality in the process that's taken, which is something we'll actually look at in more detail as we go through the creating of our assets. So I wouldn't necessarily say that although that is some way that you can get 3D assets, I wouldn't always say that that's a good place to reference good techniques and things like that. So I've seen, just as a quick example, some assets I've downloaded haven't been UV mapped at all, and they've just got a huge number of different material slots and things like that, which aren't needed. And some of it is it's just general kind of bad practice, which is why I don't really use marketplace content very often uh, when it comes to assets, and unless I know they're gonna be kind of 100% throwaway template assets. So those are just a few tips to, to see how things get made in the industry though. So with all of that said, I'm going to leave that video here for today. As always, if you enjoy the videos or find them useful, please do leave a like and share the video around. That always helps the channel and is greatly appreciated. If you haven't already, do consider subscribing to be kept up to date with any of the content coming from any of the playlists on the channel. And as ever, thanks for watching and I will see you all next time.